What will be Putin's revenge for Ukraine's caused provocation? On Tuesday, Russia issued an ominous threat to Ukraine. Its foreign intelligence services accused Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky of taking quote-unquote insane steps that threatened to escalate the war far beyond his country. And that chilling message from Russia came after Ukraine claimed to have seized 1,000 square kilometers of Russian territory. 1,000 square kilometers during the cross-border raid. This is huge, if true. Ukraine has managed a big win in the war, that would mean, by catching the Russians off guard with its surprise assault a week ago. That would be the messaging if that is true. In fact, Russia is still struggling to repel the Ukrainian offensive. But how long will Ukraine be able to celebrate this supposed win? You see, Russia has dispatched reinforcements to the frontier territories. It has evacuated tens of thousands of residents. Its president has promised retribution. The question on your mind might be, what will Russia's revenge really look like? Just how violent will a Russian response be? In the latest, Ukraine's top commander says his forces have captured 1,000 square kilometers. That is 386 square miles of Russia's Kursk region. In fact, Ukraine says it has thrown thousands of troops at Russia's Kursk region. They say that the operation has seen Ukrainian forces capture more than two dozen Russian towns and villages. On the ground, in Kursk. Intense fighting is underway between Ukraine and Russian forces. Having evacuated the region, the Russian forces on Tuesday struck back at Ukrainian troops with missiles, drones, airstrikes. The Russian military says that they have halted Ukraine's advance. According to Russian war bloggers, Ukrainian forces are trying to expand their control, but Russia is bringing in more soldiers and more heavy weaponry. They say Russia has been able to repel many of the Ukrainian attacks. Reports say Ukraine is taking heavy losses, both in men and the NATO vehicles. Footage published by Russian Defense Ministry shows Sukhoi Su-34 bombers striking Ukrainian troops. They also show Russian infantry storming Ukrainian positions. In fact, Russia estimates that over 1,600 Ukrainians have been killed. Whether or not that is true is hard to tell. In fact, reports suggest that everything they have got is, thrown, is being thrown into the Kursk battle. They say fab glide bombs have been dropped as well as the weapons and equipment sent by the NATO allies. Seeing the heavy losses that Ukraine is facing, many are asking, was Ukraine's Kursk operation even worth the risk? According to the Ukrainian soldiers, the goal of the Kursk operation is to capture Russian territory as a bargaining chip and force Moscow to divert the troops from the Donbass front. A worthy objective. And Ukraine has managed to divert Russia's attention from Ukraine's eastern front line, by the way. But at the same time, analysts are pointing out what we have been seeing since last week. The success of Ukraine's operation will actually depend on how long it is able to sustain the fight. Surely, that cannot be an easy feat. Just look at the front lines of Ukraine. Russia has captured large parts of Ukrainian territory and it has been pushing troops deeper into Ukraine. Ukraine has, in fact, struggled to reclaim territories lost to Russia, even with NATO's help. If Ukraine has struggled to thwart the Russian threat, how much can Ukraine possibly manage to accomplish in Russian territory? Not only does Russia boast of a more formidable army, it also has the help of key allies. In Kursk, Chechen soldiers are fighting alongside the Russian soldiers. The soldiers are from the Chechen battalion called Akhmat. On Tuesday, Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov published a video of his soldiers fighting alongside another Russian unit in Kursk. Come on.
In Kurs, the fighting is the most intense in the town of Susa. Now, it's not clear which side is currently in control of this Russian town. But on Monday, a Ukrainian soldier released a video saying Sudza was not under Russian control. The Ukrainian soldier claimed that the troops had not found Russian soldiers following a search of the city. Of course, we on cannot independently verify the date and claim that was made. Ukraine has portrayed its Kursk assault as a de facto victory for Ukraine. They say it will force Russia to reinforce other weak border regions with troops that could then not be deployed to Ukraine. In his nightly address, President Zelensky told Ukrainians that the operation in Russia was a matter of Ukrainian security. Just like Russia, Ukraine's Western backers, already keen on avoiding a direct NATO versus Russia war, were surprised by Ukraine's cross-border attack last week. As for what Ukraine hopes to achieve, it's very clear. Ukraine hopes to use the Kursk raid as a bargaining chip for potential true stocks in the future. But you see, by dedicating forces to Kursk, Ukraine may leave other parts of the front exposed, especially at a time when Russia has been making advances. As we said earlier, Russia has a far larger army. They could easily try to encircle the Ukrainian forces. According to the Institute for the Study of War, which is a US-based research group, Russian forces have continued their gains unabated over recent days. Russian attacks in the eastern Donetsk region of Ukraine have not stopped. Capturing Donetsk would be a major win for Putin. In fact, the region has been a long sought prize for the Russian president. According to Russian officials, Ukraine is trying to show its Western backers that it can still muster major military operations. Just as pressure mounts on both Kiev and Moscow to agree to talk about halting the war. Remember, Russia sent troops into Ukraine in February 2022. It now controls 18% of Ukrainian territory. Until the surprise attack on Russia's Kursk region last week, Ukraine had been losing territory to Russian forces. Despite hundreds of billions of dollars in US and European aid, it did not stop or reverse the Russian advance. And after more than two years of the most intense land war in Europe since World War II, both Moscow and Kiev have shown signs of fatigue. They are pondering possible talks, though in public, both are still far apart on what that would actually look like. Ukraine's Kaskad assault could go on and could go in two ways. It could invite a furious response from Putin, which would see the war drag on for many more months. Or it could force Russia into coming to the talking table, although that looks like wishful thinking. For now, all eyes are on Russia. How will Putin respond to Ukraine's provocation? We will have to wait and watch. To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.